It is October 26th. Michael Vaughn with uh, Lee Barker, CEO of Spartan Resources. And uh, Lee, we've got some catching up to do. I haven't seen you for a while. Let's begin with VRB. And of course, their big news was the beginning of construction on the Giga plant. Thanks, Mike. It's good to be back. And uh, we have been quiet for a while, as you said. Uh, the Giga factory actually is under construction now. Uh, they started the work about six weeks ago. Uh, they're doing what we call the civils. They're pouring the foundations, putting in the uh, physical infrastructure, framing, stuff like that. And uh, this will be a probably two or three year project ongoing. And uh, VRB itself, which is a partner of other three or four, well, four total partners in this project are actually starting the uh, construction, planning, etc., of the uh, battery for the 100 me megawatt hour system. Was now that the $24 that, that, billion dollar financing in August part of that? Uh, that? Well, that's what they're using now for cash flow and uh, working capital in VRB. And uh, that particular transaction doesn't have anything to do with the Gigafactory. The Gigafactory is a separate joint venture amongst four groups, uh, the local government, VRB, uh, the state government in that area, and a private group that uh, are involved in uh, renewable energy because this is going to be a project that will integrate the 100 megawatt hour battery system with 100 megawatt hours of, uh, or, or more ultimately, of renewable energy, wind and solar. Excellent. Now, there's a feasibility study going on over there. What's yes, the, the VRB uh, for its international sales is going to be required likely, and depending on the in individual transaction involved, to have to supply electrolyte for these batteries. So what's what they're because doing... Because now you're not supplying it? Well, currently the last uh, several battery sales in China have been to people who are supplying their own electrolyte. Ah. And uh, in, in the case of international sales, not every client obviously has the uh, ability to supply their own electrolyte. Hmm. And so right now, VRB is doing a uh, feasibility study in a, a JV with a, a company in Vietnam, a chemical company, to produce uh, high purity V205 and electrolyte from uh, waste material. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and the well, you uh, as, you, as you well we did and of course as you know the importation of waste into China now is forbidden yeah. and uh, but the importation of waste outside of China and production of material from waste is is a highly uh, prospective business. Well, that'd be a good thing. Then they're selling the <clears throat> whole system. That's right. And, of course, having a, an internal or vertically integrated uh, structure now will give them the ability to control their price points and make yeah. them very competitive with other large-scale grid-type uh, storage well, systems. Well, that's what we want to hear. So when are we going to hear about some new contracts? Well, the, the, some the, outside in China, too. I think that would Well, that's key. International contracts are going to be key. And VRB, now that it's been recognized in China, itself as the, uh, the uh, system of choice for grid storage systems. Uh, the company is now negotiating offshore contracts in at least four other countries, mm. including the U.S., as a matter of fact. And when might we hear about those? Well, we're hoping to have one or more of those at least in the uh, letter of intent stage before the end of the year. Oh, wow. And uh, the system with the uh, uh, contract for the uh, feasibility study for the uh, vanadium production as well. So uh, these are all in the in the works, you know. The company's busy. The company has the working capital yeah. from the BCPG tra transaction. Uh, uh, next year, there will likely be probably another financing, because what VRB has to do is when it gets a new contract to build a battery, right. it obviously needs yeah. to spend money, uh, and the, you know the new contracts are structured so that uh, they don't get all the money for the battery up front. <laughs> All right, well, let's turn to the gold projects now. Uh, and I want to talk about uh, Bruel and what El Dorado's been doing up there. Have well, you been active? El Dorado's been very active, actually, in the entire area east of the Lamac Mine in the Valdor area. Uh, they seem to be consolidating the land holdings. They've oh. taken control of QMX, which has uh, the property adjacent to ours to the west. And they now have a substantial interest in probe metals, which uh, has most of the property to the north and uh, west of us. But did they spend and the money on yours? Oh, yes. They, 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 they completed a, a survey, a complete geophysical and geochemical survey over the entire 51 claim group. Huh. But like everybody else in the exploration business, they're waiting for part of their results now. They don't have their results back. Yeah. They would planned on drilling this year. Uh, they still may but we're not sure, but definitely they'll be drilling next year and they've, they will spend their full 
allotment of $400,000 this year. That's no okay. question. Okay, Optima Tatuan, what you call the <laughs> Oaks Project. Uh, you were in there last year. This year you're going in for some trenching and sampling? Yes, we did some trenching and sampling uh, in August last, uh, last summer. We have uh, results pending in the lab, and again, we're getting yeah. the situation of an eight-week turnaround on some of these things. And uh, we're actually now commissioning, waiting for a quote uh, to do a 3D induced polarization survey over yeah. a critical part of the claims. Uh, one of the reasons we want to do this with a local contractor is they have a system that doesn't require cutting grid lines. Yeah. And uh, we want to survey underneath the lake uh, adjacent to the old shaft and carry that structure and information down to the south, of course, on the other yeah, claims. Yeah, hope you get it done. So is that it for gold or are you still looking? No, we, we have a couple of other acquisitions pending uh -huh. uh, for projects that uh, in a way are similar to what we have uh, with Oaks and uh, and the Bruel situation. You know, they're, they're projects that are close to producing mines and uh, the claim groups do have uh, mm -hmm. drill holes on them with gold intersections that have been at least 10 to 15, 20 years not followed up because of the yeah. the way the tenure was held, the way the uh, ownership of these things has been structured. You know, things were quiet, the companies that owned them were dormant and yeah. uh, nothing got done. Yeah. But uh, they're attractive targets and they're in areas, of course, with uh, known mineralization and the known deposits. And yeah. That's right, you know, the, the, the old men, uh, Mentor used to tell me that if you want to find a mine, go and look where somebody else found one before. <laughs> so. Not bad advice. Now, here's something we haven't talked about for ages, but Spartan owns a chunk of an offshore gas field uh, off Nova Scotia, I believe it is. Um, I mean, there's a big shortage of natural gas right now. Well, gas prices are at multi-year highs now, of course, as you well know. And uh, we own a, a small piece, a 6% interest, uh, unitized, uh, if the field was unitized, in a, what's called the Chibucto K90 mm. gas discovery yeah. in uh, offshore Nova Scotia. Uh, the operator is ExxonMobil because they're the operator of the whole oh, yeah. Scotia offshore gas project. Uh, another partner in that is Shell. And the other minority partner is a company called Scotia Resources. So are you hearing any rumbling? But no, we don't hear very much from them. <laughs> the, uh, we, there was a movement about uh, seven or eight years ago yeah. to uh, develop this thing and a proposal amongst the partners that we paid some money into uh, with ExxonMobil to do a study to develop it. But it's been quiet since then. Uh, gas prices, of course, at that time dropped yeah. violently down to yeah. levels and just below two dollars an MCF. They're up over six now, close to seven. And mm -hmm. uh, you know that gas field uh, potentially could be developed. It's only ten miles from the North Triumph production platform, yeah. and it's an asset which we've had now for about twenty-five years. <laughs> and uh, we bought it as a hard asset to put something in the company. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, Basically, it doesn't cost us anything. We pay a small environmental charge that ExxonMobil prorates to the other partners, uh, including us, uh, every year for the environmental report they have to make to the Scotia Offshore Gas Board. And, uh, you know, I, I would sell it. Uh, Spartan would sell it mm -hmm. uh, if we had someone interested in buying it. Uh, but uh, ExxonMobil is in control, so whatever oh. happens with it, uh, yeah. you know, with the tail would wag the dog. Well, the outlook has changed a lot. Well, look, we did a lot of catching up in this session, Lee. Good to see you again, and uh, come back when you have more news. Well, we hope to have some news in the next uh, five to six weeks, I think, and we'll be back uh, for updates as we go.